Snakes, the slithering, legless reptiles that scare some and entrance others. Snakes have been around for millions of years, and yet their evolutionary origin remains a mystery to many. Today, we'll be taking a look back at the evolutionary history of snakes to see how they came to be. I'm sure that in a few years, with the rapid advancement of paleontological technology, this video will look silly, but that's kind of the fun of it. Before we begin, if you want to see more content like this or other reptile content, please consider subscribing. But with that out of the way, let's get right into it. The earliest iterations of what you might consider to be a snake came about during the late Cretaceous period about 100 million years ago. Four genera in total were found, with three originating from the Middle East. Prepare now for some of the worst Latin you've ever heard. The Eupodophis, the Hysophis, and the Pachyrachis roamed the Middle East during the same time period. These snakes actually had small hind legs, a remnant of their ancestors. Now, during this time in history, the Middle East was actually submerged underwater, which is crazy to believe, which led many scientists to speculate that snakes must have evolved from animals such as the Mosasaurus. However, a fourth genera of snake was found, the Najash, which was found in South America during the same time period as the other snakes in an area that was very much not underwater. As of now, scientists conclude that snakes must have evolved from lizards. It is thought that these lizards must have been burrowers and that the common ancestor to all these snakes may have been an early varanid. Now, for those of you unfamiliar, the Varana group in modern times is represented by monitor lizards such as Komodo dragons. These early snakes were probably also burrowing species that resembled more of a snake than a lizard and yet still had those pesky legs to get rid of. As snakes evolved throughout the fossil records, their hind legs gradually began to become nothing more than a nub in their hind quarters, leaving behind a snake that could slither across the earth. Truthfully speaking, if you look at a snake x-ray, you can actually still see this little nub in their skeleton, which is pretty cool. Moving forward one time period on our handy little timeline, we arrive at the Pleistocene era. In the jungles of South America, dinosaurs had died out 5 million years ago, and large mammals had not yet evolved into their gigantic sizes. Therefore, it is strange that scientists discovered a snake of gigantic scale 60 million years ago. The American Titanoboa, now famous among dinosaur enthusiasts, grew up to 48 feet long and may have weighed up to a ton. Those size estimates make the Titanoboa the largest snake ever found in the fossil records. Currently, as scientists try to figure out why a snake or how a snake could grow this large, the general theory states that they must have hunted the massive crocodiles that roamed the swamps of South America at the time, making it a largely aquatic species as were many other giant snakes of this era. It is also possible that they battled the Carbonimus, a massive turtle that we featured on the channel in the past. But wait a minute. I wrote this script originally a couple years ago, and since then a lot has changed. Though the Titanoboa has long held the title as the largest snake ever, that changed in 2024, at least lengthwise. In 2005, a holotype fossil was found of a potential new snake species in western India. By 2024, the genus Vasuki and species Indicus was described by scientists. Regression models based on fossil records have thus far given a very wide range of lengths for the Vasuki Indicus from 36 feet to 50 feet long. However, that large estimate would make it the longest snake on record, though scientists at this point believe that Titanoboa still would have been a more robust and therefore larger snake. Interestingly, unlike many large snakes that slithered the earth millions of years ago, such as Titanoboa, scientists believe that Vasuki Indicus was largely terrestrial, or possibly semi-aquatic. Slithering around 47 million years ago during the Middle Eocene period, this snake was also more recent than Titanoboa. It is thought that the Vasuki preyed on catfish, turtles, crocodilians, and even primitive species of whale. 
It will be very exciting to see what scientists discover about this species and this genus in the coming years, as there have already been more discoveries that have led scientists to debate whether there are more species under this genus. However, by and large, it seems as time has gone on, just as with turtles and tortoises, the general body plan for snakes, if you will, was set in stone at least 60 million years ago. That being said, as the mammoth-sized mammals of those ages began to die out and be replaced with smaller species, the snakes naturally adapted and became smaller. While the reticulated python, green anaconda, and Burmese python still grow to enormous sizes, it is more likely than not that humans will never again see a snake that reaches over 50 feet in length. For the most part, snakes stay about 10 feet or less, with only a few growing larger than that. Being at a slightly smaller size has helped snakes flourish for millions of years and survive on the brutal timeline of evolution. Now the role of snakes in society hasn't always been easy, as snakes have been demonized by cultures and religions for thousands of years, but that's another story for another time. If you want me to talk about it, please be sure to leave a comment below. And I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I really love and enjoy making these kind of paleontology videos because it really makes me feel connected to my younger self that loved dinosaurs. If you enjoyed the video, I ask again that you consider subscribing and please go to a museum, see a dinosaur in real life. It's always worth a stop.